Obviously, um, the culture war, the men versus women. Is there a culture war? Um, if you don't know it, yes, there is. Um, we've kind of talked about it briefly. Um, the reason why a lot of women might not know it, you know, the men probably know it a little bit more <clears throat> is because um, when you go to a, a man type of lifestyle guru slash relationship guru, those men are talking about it. Uh, many of the women uh, out there might be going to people that are kind of on their side of the, the culture war and they don't recognize that things are quote unquote changing. But the issue of the change is not so much that the change is something that is new. It is something that is people have been talking about for a long time and nobody, you know, a lot of people just want to ignore it, but it's getting bigger and bigger. And so we can't, you know, continue to ignore it. Um, you know, we need to, especially as Christians, we need to talk about it because I don't want you guys to get caught up in some of the stuff out there. And just like we talked about last week, when we were talking about people searching for leadership, um, that's why another reason why I want to go into this, because it, it does go right into that concept of leadership. It's about who's leading you. It's like a lot of times you can tell where people are and what they listen to by what they talk about or what they believe. So people might say, oh, well, you know, all women do this, or all men do this. Well, it's just about what, who you're listening to. You know, if you believe all men cheat, you're listening to people that push that agenda because every man in their life has cheated on them. But um, there's plenty of men out there that have never cheated at all. I have friends that have never, ever cheated on their wives and or girlfriends. So um, it's just about who you're listening to. So we need to make sure that we understand this culture war is here, it's happening, it's around us, and that um, you don't have to be involved with it. You can actually be a part of the solution and not a part of the problem. So is there a war and why do we have it? Um, yes, there is a war and we do have it. And this goes all the way back to Genesis. And, um, you know, we are Christians here after all. And um, then he said to the woman, i.e., you know, God said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy and in pain you shall give birth and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. This goes all the way back to the beginning. And even to this day, a lot of women still are in trying to get control. They're trying to gain control. And there is this constant back and forth between the husband and the man. I mean, the husband and the wife, back and forth, back and forth. Who controls who? Whose destiny is, um, is more important? So is there a war? Yes. It's been here since the very beginning of time. And it's something that we need to understand. So what happened was, uh, as we go through life, we have to remember that for most of, especially the Western Hemisphere, i.e. America, um, the man has ruled. Even in the Eastern Hemisphere, the man has ruled. But then there has been an uprising or was an uprising, um, you know, of feminism, and that allowed women to gain more power. Now, most men, again, don't have a problem with feminism. Most men want their daughters and their wives and their sisters and their moms to live peacefully, to live in great situations where nobody is hurting them, when nobody is bothering them and that they have um, the ability to win in life. But um, there is an unseen World War III. And uh, this actually, oh, wow, it cut, it cut it off at the bottom. But this um, comes from the Washington Post at the very bottom. And basically what it, what it talks about is the fact that there is a lot going on where a lot of the new feminists, what some people consider the third wave of feminism, some people consider the fourth wave of feminism, it's not about empowering women anymore. It's about basically destroying the um, concept of men. Um, and like you can see it right here, uh, attacks on sex to attacks on men, a strong focus on their personal behavior the way they talk, the way they approach relationships, even the way they sit on public transit. This is an attack on men. This is not an attack on men being sexist. This is not an attack on men saying that you cannot be something. 
this is an attack on men just being men. You know, when men are around men, they're acting like men. You know, and so this is an attack on who they are and their character um, in the way that they just go through life. Okay, now this is not to say that, you know, men don't do this too. We've talked about things like MGTOW in this group, and we've also talked about, you know, Red Pill and, um, and all these other people. Okay, so where is this awkward elephant? Okay. This awkward elephant is basically this concept of re-engineering romantic relationships. Because when feminism and some of these other movements are trying to re-engineer rela uh, romantic relationships, they, they, they're not talking to traditional men and women about what they want. They're not even talking, about, talking to other people about what they want. All they're saying is this is what we want. We, these group of people that are out here, this is what we want. Okay, and you see down here at the bottom, MGTOW, Red Pill, Pink Pill, Feminism, Incels, Femcells, et cetera. There's a lot of these little groups that are popping up with more and more power. And each one of them is trying to basically fight the other. Because we have to understand that when you're done with Red Pill and it's going against Pink Pill, um, or MGTOW is going against Feminism, or Incels versus Femcells, these people are just really the same type of person, but they're just when one of them's a man, incels are men, femcells are women. And they're making the argument. Instead of them just getting together and saying, hey, we belong together, they're saying, no, uh, these other group of people should be doing what we want them to do. Okay, so who leads the battles? in these things. And it's generally the non-traditional people or the non-traditional romantic, okay? Um, what you would consider soft or heavy thinking men or hard women. When you look at most of these arguments, when you look at most of the people on TV, when you're looking at all these people that are going back and forth, it doesn't matter even if it's something like the talk. Um, what you see is these uh, women that brought, you know, brought themselves up by their bootstraps, they're doing, they're living life, they're, you know, out here, they're awesome, blah, blah, blah. And then they're saying, well, there's no good men. And then if you go out and you find guys that aren't as aggressive when it comes to women, when they aren't as, um, you know, that one energy suave, um, again, they get together on Reddit. And then before you know it, they're angry and then they're, fought, you know, creating these groups. Okay, why are they doing this? It's, well, it's, it's pain. Everybody wants to be loved and accepted for who they are. And at the end of the day, it's all coming from pain. And this is serious. This is not something you play around with. But we, ha but we have to understand it. We have to know and we have to help and be a part of the problem. I mean, part of the solution, not a part of the problem. So where are these people? Where well, right now they're primarily on the internet. Why? Because the internet gives them freedom. They're free to be wherever they want to be and to scream as loud as they want to. So they're all over YouTube. They're all over Reddit. They're all over the message boards. They're all over social media. So if you have not run into them, you're, you're more than likely one day going to run into them because they're everywhere. And the reason why this is important is because they're still spewing information about romantic situations. They will tell you, like I said, that all women are hoes or all men like I say, are jerks, are all this and all that. And anytime you hear all, that should be a huge red flag to you right now that there's something hugely wrong with their ideology. Because not all of anything is bad. Okay, that's like me saying all dogs are mean and all cats, you know, are lazy or something. You know, that, that just doesn't make, that, that's just not logical. It doesn't work that way. Okay, so our part of this, okay, we need to be a part of the positivity, the understanding, the education, the love, helping, you know, those to see a wider spectrum of truth. The reason why I put truth in, um, uh, you know, quotes here is because honestly, only God understands real truth. We as humans, we will never understand real truth. We always have blinders. So the point here is to, you know, walk out with, you know, as much positivity as we can as much understanding as we can, as much education and love. 
Okay, a lot of people though are still chained down from their pain. They're they're angry. They're frustrated. And honestly, they're they're seeking other people with like interests so that they can burn together, so they can have that energy and complain together. Because people like to be able to do their complaining. They like to have people who listen to them as they're going through their pain. Okay. And uh, but what does Proverbs say? And this was funny because as I was doing this, um, in my spirit, I finally understood what this was. So I think God was showing me that, you know, it's finally what this proverb was. Because I used to just literally just think it was angry men and angry people. Um, but I kind of felt in my spirit that God is saying something a little bit deeper. Because these angry men, these angry people, these furious folks that it's talking about, they are talk, generally talking about a, 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 some kind of system, some kind of system they think is wrong, some kind of system that they think is this huge problem. And the problem is when you hang out with them, you will start to be like them. You'll start to talk like them. You'll start to walk like them. Okay, anybody that you're, that you're watching, it doesn't matter. You listen to enough um, I don't know, people that are saying that the sky is red and sooner or later you'll walk around and be in a conversation and be like, oh, you know, really the sky is red. And that's why I was saying a lot of times we, you can tell where somebody's watching or what they're listening to just by how they talk. So as this war is building up and as these things are going through, I'm just encouraging you to watch out as you're you know, going through and getting information from people, especially those that, are, that seem angry, they seem bitter at the world, the world has hurt them in a way, women and or men are wrong, um, all this other kind of stuff. I mean, I could have shown you guys a billion videos um, out here, but you don't need to see all that. You know, we've, we've talked about it before, we've gone through it, and we need to understand that this is a war. This is a war, and it goes all the way back to Genesis. All right, so that is basically my basic presentation. I think I've given us plenty to talk about.